Hey yo, what's up and welcome, I'm the one and only West Coast King and welcome back to the LAFC career where today we're getting into season number two with this offseason transfer window. It's a short one, it's January, it's only one month long and we're already a couple of days into it so even less time to make things happen. The good news is, with this career, I try not to do too much in each transfer window, so there won't be too much business to take care of. But the big one, which I asked you guys about last episode, was the situation revolving Diego Rossi, our young designated player. I asked, should we replace him? He didn't do a whole lot last season. He was all right in the assist category, actually sort of near the league lead in assists, somewhere up there. Not Didn't lead the league, but he was close. Um, but he just too often disappeared and for a designated player we need more production out of him and he just felt like he wasn't going to give it to us uh, so I asked should we replace him and the responses I got were kind of what I expected I'd say the majority of you guys wanted to see me bring in somebody else either at winger or a new designated player striker to replace Christian Ramirez um, and, and I, I did expect that and it's, it's career mode you want to see new players coming in but I have been trying to keep this career as realistic as possible to what an MLS team would do. And an MLS team with a player like Diego Rossi, who's only one season in to his time at the team now, and he's only 20 years old, they would not just go replacing him, even if he did struggle in season one. We got to give him a little bit more time to develop. He's only 20. He's got plenty of potential left in him, which a couple of you guys did mention. And you were right. Those, those people that said stick with him for a little bit while longer, just give him one more chance. That's what we should do. And that is what I'm going to do, at least for the first half of the season. We're going to stick with Diego Rossi. I expect big things out of him here in season number two. I think he can deliver. And one of the ways I think we can help him and help our team in general is switching the formation. We went with a 4-3-3 attack last season. It worked at times. And at other times, I felt very, very exposed against a, a couple of different teams. And I'm going to go back to what I know. And what I know works for me, my play style. And that's the 4 4 one, one. I'm going to run it not with a center forward. I'm going to start out with a cam. And that's because I want to try to keep Lee Wynn in this formation. He might work here. He might not. If he does not work in this formation, I will switch to the, the version with a center forward. And I will try Diego Rossi in there behind Ramirez. I think that actually could work quite well. But for now, we'll keep Rossi on the wing. We'll use this formation that allows Lee Wynn to stay in the team as well. And I think this should really help stabilize the team. Now, if you saw last episode, which was mainly just the, the MLS draft for us, we brought in four new young players, but we didn't exactly hit it out of the park in the right back position, did we? We were trying to wait till that draft to bring in a new right back to replace Beta Shore. Just didn't happen for us. There just wasn't a good enough right back in that draft class for us to really make that change with a youngster. So in this, in this transfer window, I will be looking at the right back position. I wish it could have played out differently, but it really didn't. And I, I definitely think that we have to address that now in the transfer window. So after a little bit of searching, I have found a player that I think really, really fits our needs. And it's Walmer Pacheco from La Equidad in Colombia. Being that he's playing in Colombia, he's going to be on pretty low wages, which is nice for us. We shouldn't have to worry about him ever wanting to be a designated player because that's just something you don't want. If you're doing a career mode like this, you don't want a designated player fullback, believe me. So he should be decently priced. He has a $1.7 million release clause, which is also nice. Don't have to worry about negotiating a fee there. So let's go ahead and pull the trigger on Walmer Pacheco. And here is a look at our new young right back. Pacheco was actually 69 rated, which is a little bit higher than what I was expecting. And as you can see, his physicals are off the charts. His technical ability is actually a little bit better than what I was expecting as well. It's actually pretty much right on line with Beta Shore, at least in his defending statistics. I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, he should come right in and probably take over the starting right back spot from Beta Shore. It's not bad. I, I think we got a pretty decent deal for a kid that still has quite a bit of room to grow. So we're moving through the transfer window now. And I just took a moment to re-sign my players that were on expiring contracts this year. And Walker Zimmerman was among those players. So he got a new contract. He did have a release clause in his old contract. Which is where I think this email is coming from. He apparently was in talks with Buenos Aires, which is technically Boca Juniors, but they're not licensed in FIFA this year. So he was in talk with Boca Juniors to move to Argentina. I got no notification of that at all whatsoever at any point. 
So I'm glad I re-signed him just now because he's staying in LA, but I, I wish I could have gotten some kind of a heads up that he may be wanting to move. That was very, very close. All right, so we're nearing the end of the transfer window here. And I was looking at the team and I was, I was thinking, we really haven't made a big splash. We haven't brought in a, a really big player yet. And I would really, really like to be able to do that, but we don't have a designated player spot available to sign a massive player. But what if I could get someone that was close to the designated player wage value, which if you remember our rules, a designated player is anyone that makes $12,000 per week or more in wages. What if I could find a player that was close to that? Maybe he's a little bit over, but I could offer him $11,999, which puts him under the DP value and then just kind of compensate with a big signing bonus because we have a lot of money to play with. Maybe I could make that work. I tried to go for Alexander Pato. I failed three times. I just couldn't get him. It was too, it was too much of a reach. So then I went for a different player. And honestly, I would have showed you the contract negotiations, but I had just finished my third failed attempt with Pato. I didn't think this one was going to work, but it did. And, uh, we have a new player in the team, and that player is none other than Hulk. Yeah, I, I didn't think it was going to happen. I Honestly, my mouth, my jaw just dropped when it said it was accepted. I mean, he got like a $3 million bonus, but he's making $11,999. He's not a designated player, and he's in the squad. And actually, getting Hulk could be a big pickup for us, because throughout the preseason tournament, I played Lee Win in this position he didn't do a whole lot. I played Rossi there one game in the preseason tournament as well. He scored a goal. So I think the player that we need in this position is more of a secondary striker rather than a center attacking mid, which is what Lee Win is. It's just not his position in this formation, unfortunately for him. So I think we'll go with Hulk in there behind Ramirez. That should work fairly well. If not, I could swing Hulk out wide on the left and put Rossi in the middle. I don't have a problem doing that either. Hulk still has a little bit of pace to him. I think he could do a good job out there on the wing. And unfortunately for Lee Wynn, I, I don't think there's a spot for him on the bench either. I, I like Phil Haber's versatility. He's more of an all-around player. Lee Wynn is more of a, an attack-minded player. I, I think we might end up having to sell him, which is sad because I really do like him. But, boys, we got Hulk in the team. All right, so March 1st is here. The first match of the season is upon us, and we have Sporting Kansas City coming to town. There is the starting 11 you see there. We do have Lee Wynn on the bench instead of Benny Failhopper. Failhopper's move to Buenos Aires did fall through, so he'll still be with the team, but he won't be in the 18, so he's going to get pretty unhappy. That's his fault. He should have taken the move. Uh, but Lee Wynn has already declined one in his overall as well. We haven't even played the first match of the season. So kind of glad I went out and got another player for that position and a definite upgrade at that. The reason I like Lee Wynn so much is because of his long shots. Hulk's long shots? Oh, man. I, I can't wait to get in here. Let's, let's, enough, enough talking. Let's play this game. All right, here we go. Kickoff of season number two. And I swear down, the first touch Hulk gets in the offensive half, I'm going to unleash a shot from like 60 yards. I swear to God, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. Let me see if I can get him the ball real quick. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to shoot from out here. I'm not an idiot. Let's, let's, let's try to cycle the ball. And he lost it. Nope, he has 90 strength. I forgot about that. Easily gets the ball back. Oh my God, I'm going to have so much fun with Hulk. We go in the middle. It's Horta. And that's half time. No, it's not. It's a foul. What? Who's down? Who is that? That's not good. We lost someone already. Who who's down? It's it's Mark Anthony K. Okay then. Um, guess guess what, Lee Win, you're you're back in, bro. And and Failhaber might actually have a role to play this season. That is just not the way we wanted to start things this year. All right. Well, start of the second half now. Uh, literally nothing happened in the first half. Absolutely, there were zero shots actually in the first forty-five minutes. So. Uh, Let's see if we can't find a little bit of a rhythm here in the second half. And Hulk is continuing to just absolutely dominate the midfield. And we have a ball over. If Martinez, if not Martinez, Ramirez, get a little bit of speed, we might have been through there. Oh my, and they score. They score. That's their first shot of the game. 70 minutes in. I, oh my God. 
Let me switch to Pacheco. Are you serious? I can't. It's it's been a complete embed. Like we haven't even played bad. They've scored on two two chance. They've had two chances, scored them both, and now they have a third chance here. They're probably going to score this one as well. No, nope, Horta gets to that and he clears it away. But that's still the end of the game. Oh, it's not the end of the game yet. That's blocked, and now it should be the end. Two nothing. Two not. Let, let me let me take a look at the stats to, to confirm. They might have had three shots. I think they had one blocked in the first half. They ended with four shots. And scored twice. We had four shots, nothing from inside the 18-yard box, and didn't come close to scoring a goal. I'm pretty sure I'm done with ultimate. As a matter of fact, we'll play one more game right now. We're gonna play on legendary difficulty. I can't I can't score on ultimate difficulty anymore. It's not possible. Whatever update they've done to FIFA, it's not possible to score. This this might not be a good idea to play this game right now, actually. Uh we're gonna be in Portland. I'm dropping down to Legendary Difficulty to see if I can actually score a goal. If I lose to Portland on two more just bullshit goals, I might rage quit this series. On I might rage quit I might rage quit YouTube at this point. I'm so fucking pissed at this game. Man, for the love of God, LAFC, you better fucking pull through for me in this one. Or this might be it. Rossi's coming forward. Ball falls to Hulk, and we've got Rossi through. Rossi lines up a shot, and he misses. Well, it's already better. That was already the best chance we've had of the day. And uh, at least we got a clean look, so I'll, I'll take that. It's an improvement. Yes, Vela. Big tackle on the wing from Carlos Vela. Let's go, boys. Vela playing it up for Ramirez. Ramirez in the middle. Nicely done. One through. Yes, Rossi. I see him over here. Rossi, you got to finish that. Thank you. God. Oh my goodness. Right on the brink of halftime. We got the goal. Hulk has the assist. Rossi has the goal. It's 1-0 in Portland. Even on Legendary, I cannot score goals. Like, it's been a struggle to create any chances. We've had two. Rossi's had both of the shots. And he does have the goal as well. It, it just, it's so hard. Why is he this so hard all of a sudden? Oh my god. Oh no. Oh wow. How? I don't even care. He missed. He missed. I don't know how we got that much power on that header. But good god. Oh no, 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 no. Pacheco get over there. Pacheco get back over here. So, why? What? Who was that? Who was the fl Who was my center back that literally walked away from the player that was receiving the ball in the box? Who was it? I will fucking bench you for life. I, I'm, I'm so sick of losing. That actually might have been... Who is that? It's Presenio. Well, guess what, Presenio? You're benched. I'm bringing in the 55 rated... Uh, whatever his... I don't even know what... Michaels. Michaels is in. He's 60 rated. I He's 60 rated. Yeah, Presenio. That was stupid as hell. Oh, Miller saved us right there. There's 15 minutes left. I don't think we have a shot in hell of winning this game. I'm not taking out Diego Rossi. He's the only one that scored a goal. The only one that's really been close. I see Ramirez here. Ramirez tries to go the one-two for Hulk. It's just not happening. Hulk back heels for Horta. Rossi tries to make a move here. Nicely done, Rossi. Beautifully worked. And there it is. And I think it's Hulk as well on the finish. And it's 2-1 in the 90th minute. You've got to be kidding me. On legendary difficulty... Uh, we're not going ultimate. Ultimate's done. It's over. And it's not happening. I, I can't go back to it. I literally can't do anything on ultimate difficulty. I can barely win on legendary at this point. This is where we're staying, boys. This is our comfort zone. I'm sure I'm still going to lose on legendary as well, but Jesus Christ, it's a struggle. Wow, man. Wow. I Again, I haven't been able to play very well at all since the last update to this game. I don't know what EA has done to it, but Ultimate Difficulty is unplayable. Don't play Ultimate Difficulty. It's just impossible. We'll go back to Legendary. At least we might have a chance here. All right. Well, that's where we're going to end it for today. Uh, that was a roller coaster ride of a, of a start to season number two, wasn't it? We got Hulk in the team kind of unexpectedly. And then we had to play games, which quite honestly, and I'm pretty sure it's pretty evident, my least favorite part about FIFA 19. The gameplay is... Wow. 
uh yeah so hopefully on legendary i don't have to complain about that anymore and we can just play games it seemed pretty balanced i mean it, it was pretty fair i thought we, we only won 2-1 it was not like i killed them on legendary it's pretty much just back to fifa 18 so i'll mess with some sliders and things and see if we can get get it right and we'll, we'll just stick with legendary because I, like i said we're not going back to ultimate it, it's not going to happen and i probably won't even talk about it anymore legendary is where we're staying that's where the rest of the series will play out and we'll, we'll just work with it so that's where we're ending it for today if you did enjoy it looking forward to season two let me know by leaving a like below subscribe if you're new and i'll see you when we come back for some more lafc career see ya.